So just really quick before we start with the video. I am sure, uh, sure that not everyone want to watch this topic. So I came up with five designs and I will put the timestamp here and in the real intro for you if you want to skip the rest. If you want to take a look at the results first, they will be shown at this time. And I apologize now for quite a lot of bad puns that I'm quite sure will come up because dying and dying. Sorry. <laughs> Even with my allegory of peace done, I still have quite the amount of feathers. Lucky for me, I not only have the feathers, I as well have a tie-dye kit. I opened it because I needed the dark blue, I think. Yeah. But we still have all the other colors. Basically, what we will do is dyeing all of them, uh, them all, all of the feathers, and then I decide what I will do with them. I have some things in mind. Basically, all of them have a fabric top and a ball gown skirt out of feathers. At the moment I'm not sure if it will be more a pastel rainbow or galaxy colors or what else. We will see. This is a complete adventure and will be decided on the go. So buckle up. For the purpose of trying it out I only used the turquoise color and yeah, I just put water in it, shook it up so that the pigment dissolves and then I filled it again a second and a third time to have enough liquid or dye for the feathers to swim in and yeah, to thin it out a little bit. Though all of this was an experiment, I decided to not pre-wash the feathers or do anything with them. Normally to prepare the fibers to take in some color you would at least wash them. Maybe do some other stuff. I don't know how to uh, say it in English. So um, I decided not to do that and yeah it gave me pastel colors but I'm fine with it. For this first batch, I thought it would be nice to not have them die that long. <laughs> so I only left them in there for 15 minutes, washed them out, and yeah, let's say they didn't die. They only got tinted. That sounds so strange. I love it. Um, doesn't matter. So, the second batch I left in there for 13 minute, uh, 30 minutes, which already gave me a little bit more color, but yeah, then I straight up went to three hours, then six hours, and the last attempt was 12 hours, but between the six hour attempt and the 12 hour attempt, there was not that big of a difference. The drying part was quite interesting. After they were washed I dried them with a towel just a little bit so that they were still damp but not completely soaking wet. And then I put them into this little box and took out my hair dryer and tried to dry them this way. That ended in feathers being everywhere. So, not the best idea. I ended up with a method to 
dry them off with a towel, putting them into a box, letting them dry overnight, and as soon as they started to get fluffy again, I put them into quite a big box and just, yeah, used the hairdryer on the hottest setting and just put in some air a little bit at a time. I made it, um, I ended the blowing <laughs> again and again, not to heat them up too much. And after they then were quite fluffy, I let them out for two days to dry completely and was able to put them into baggies. For my little cheat sheet on how long you have to die to be considered good enough for me, we have 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 3 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours, just to see how big the difference is. And I have to say, each feather took the dye differently. So in each batch, you have an array of colors. But that makes it a little bit more unique, I would say. I do like that in each batch you have a lot of different shades of one color. Now let's look at the results of me dying for four or five days straight. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> so this is how it look, uh, how the feathers looked in the end. First we have the yellow feathers. Then we have the orange ones and yeah, when the red ones were dried they looked exactly the same, so I put them together. Same effect with the darker red and the pink, so they are united as well. Then we have some purple ones, the blue feathers, the batch that was dyed in turquoise, a rather underwhelming green, and same goes for the black. Mixing the greens, the blue and the purple, gave me quite the interesting color. And all of them together made, yeah, kind of a brownish. Let's take a look at the five designs that I came up with. The doll or the drawing that wears the dresses isn't uh, important. This will get modified depending on the dress we land on. Just to mention it, the fabric part may change a little bit color-wise depending on what fabric is available for me. So let's start with our first girl. A basic rainbow design with a hip thing that should resemble a cloud in the end. The second design we have is a galaxy-inspired dress. I have to admit the galaxy will be quite pastel. Um, the white dots or the stars uh, will be replaced by rhinestones if we choose this one. And it's yeah a little bit more Victorian inspired. This third one is, let's say, the princess option. Very feathery, pastel and girly. Then we have a phoenix-inspired dress and maybe the feathers are not vibrant enough for it, but I still wanted to show this one to you. The last one is again a rainbow dress, but this time with black and a far tighter skirt. Yeah, so these are the five options you have. Let me know which one you like the most in the comment section down below. And whichever one will get the most votes will be 
one of the next dolls I make. The 1st of April is our date when I start working on the dress that you decided on. So, I hope you have a lovely time and we will see us in the next video.